Unit 8, Amphibians and Reptiles. Part 1, Amphibians. So, uh, all the animals we've talked about up to this point have lived in the water. They've all been aquatic. Um, the move to land, animals faced several physical challenges. Uh, number one, water uh, exhibits a buoyant force that counters gravity. So when you're in water, gravity is pulling you down, but water exhibits an upward force. Uh, therefore, when these animals moved out of the water onto land, they were required to move against gravity. Air is not buoyant like water is. Uh, therefore, we see one of the main adaptations, which is the adaptation of the limbs. Uh, limbs and a more complex skeletal and muscular system. Um, so our skeleton and muscular system needed to become stronger in order to help fight against that gravity. When we talk about the, when we talk about the water, um, oxygen is dissolved in the water and must be removed by the gills through the counter current. So this is where, when we had our when we had our gills, water flowed this way, but our blood flowed this way. Now, when we're in the air, oxygen is more readily available. Uh, thereby, with lungs, terrestrial animals can get oxygen from the air more effectively than they can in the water. The, another thing to keep in mind is that water retains heat, so the temperature of water does not change quickly. Uh, this is why you'll see, if you ever watch the news, you'll see uh, the general temperature but then uh, you'll see it talked about, you'll see about temperatures by, uh, by the lake. So what we're going to see is we're going to see air temperature changing much more easily than water temperature. So animals that move to land are going to have to combat this by developing behavioral and physical adaptations to protect themselves from these extreme temperature shifts. Sound also travels more quickly through the water. Um, and fish have their lateral line system, which picks up vibrations in the water, which are, which are effectively sound waves in water. The lateral line system is not effective in the air, because sound waves actually travel much more slowly through the air. So when we talk about characteristics of amphibians, frogs begin their life cycles as a tadpole. Uh, this tadpole is limbless, is gill breathing, and is a fish-like larva. This tadpole will undergo metamorphosis and start to form hind legs. If you notice, the body elongates. The tail the tail begins to shorten, and gills are beginning to be replaced by lungs. And we also see forelimbs. As, they, as the metamorphosis continues, eventually it becomes an adult and can move from an aquatic organism to become equipped to life on land. Modern amphibians include things like frogs, toads, salamanders, um, and legless oscillations. Most amphibians have four legs. They have moist skin. Uh, they lack scales. And skin that allows for gas exchange. They also have lungs and a double loop circulatory system. So a little bit different than the fish that we saw, which was a single loop. Here amphibians are going to have a double loop. And then, as we mentioned, its larvae are aquatic. 
if we talk about feeding and digestion, uh, herbivores uh, as larvae, amphibians can either be herbivores or carnivores. Frogs have larvae uh, that are herbivores, while salamander larvae are carnivores. Now, as these both become adults, they become carnivores. They are uh, essentially predators of insects and other small animals. Some use their jaws, like salamanders, rely mainly on their jaws for catching. Others flick their tongues to catch flying prey. These are like the frogs and the toads. The digestive tract, the digestive tract uh, makes use of the mouth. Food moves from the mouth into the esophagus and from the esophagus into the stomach. This is where digestion begins. From the stomach, food moves to the small intestine, which receives enzymes from the pancreas. So the pancreas gives the small intestine enzymes, and food is absorbed into the bloodstream and delivered to the body cells. Any leftover food moves from the small intestine to the large intestine before waste material is eliminated through the cloaca. So now not only the food waste goes to the cloaca, but any urinary waste, urinary, urinary waste moves into the cloaca, digestive waste like we mentioned, and any reproductive So the eggs or the sperm through the, leave through the cloaca before leaving the body. Uh, excretion is again mainly done by the kidneys. The nephrons are the, are the functional unit of the kidneys. And the kidneys filter wastes from the blood and excrete either ammonia or urea as waste products. Ammonia is the waste product of proteins a uh, protein metabolism, and is excreted by amphibians that live in the water. Amphibians that live on land excrete urea. Urea is actually made from ammonia that is uh, produced in the liver. So ammonia is actually changed into your ammonia in the liver is actually changed into urea, which is then excreted from the frog. As larvae, most amphibians exchange gases through their skin and their gills. Uh, but remember, adults are going to lose those gills and breathe through lungs that you can see here. They're going to breathe through their two lungs and again through their skin and actually they can absorb oxygen through the mouth. The circulatory system in amphibians is a double loop. So the first loop, the first loop is coming from the heart, deoxygenated blood. So oxygen without blood leaves the heart. Sorry. Oxygen uh, or blood without oxygen leaves the heart and travels to the lungs where it gets oxygen and then comes back into the heart. So it leaves from the single there uh, leaves from the single ventricle and travels to the heart or sorry ventricle to the lungs. Also um, skin and like I mentioned the mouth to gain oxygen and then travels back to the heart through the right atrium um, sorry to the left atrium the left atrium then moves the blood into the ventricle again and that ventricle then pumps the blood throughout the rest uh, throughout the rest of the body where it diffuses into the cells. And then from the body, it will return back into 
it will return back to the right ventricle, or sorry, the right atrium, and then to the ventricle, and then begin the first loop again. So one of the things to make one of the things to remember is that amphibians are going to have a three-chambered heart. There are two atriums. There's a right atrium and a left atrium. And remember, we refer to these based on the frogs from the frog's point of view. The right atrium receives deoxygenated blood, moves blood into the ventricle, and then the ventricle pumps the blood out to the lungs and to the skin. That blood then returns back into the left ventricle, or sorry, sorry, the blood then moves back to the left atrium, having oxygen into the same ventricle, but then pumped to the body. Uh, vision is going to be very important for most amphibians. They use sight to locate and capture prey that fly at high speeds and escape to escape predators. Uh, frogs have a structure called the nicotating membrane, which is structure S here. Now this nicotating membrane is a transparent eyelid that can move across the eye to protect it underwater. So it acts like a swim goggle. And uh, it also helps keep the eye from drying out when it's on land. Another sense, uh, taking the place of the lateral line, is this tympanic membrane. So the tympanic membrane here in T is an eardrum. It's a thin external membrane on the side of the head that's used to hear high-pitched sounds and amplify sounds from the vocal cords. So some other senses uh, include touch. They do have a sense of touch. They have chemical receptors in the skin. They have taste buds on the tongue and they have a sense of smell. Now it's going to be important for amphibians to be able to sense the temperature change that occurs in the environment because they are ectotherms. T-H-E-R. They are ectotherms. Ecto meaning uh, that they're going to get their body heat from the external environment. Okay. Uh, their amphibians cannot regulate their body temperatures through their metabolism. So they have to be able to sense their body temperature, sense the temperature outside, and they can then go to a warmer place or to a cooler place in order to cool down. External fertilization occurs in, uh, in amphibians. Um, external fertilization occurs in the water. So amphibians are still dependent on water for reproduction. These eggs that we see are not, they're not covered. There's no shells here. And uh, with no shells, they are at risk of drying out. Eggs are covered with a sticky jelly-like substance that helps them stay anchored to vegetation in the water. So this, is a, this picture is a microscopic view so we can see those eggs. And so this is any sort of aquatic plant that the eggs can, that the eggs can um, stick to. Uh, after fertilization, the, embryo, the developing embryo uses the yolk inside of the egg as nourishment until it hatches into a tadpole. Um, so now if we look at, and you're going to see my wonderful, my wonderful drawing abilities again. So here is uh, my female frog. When the female frog uh, spawns, when she releases her eggs, the male frog is actually going to be on top of her and behind. So the male is going to latch onto the back of the female and release his sperm at the same time. 